with this. Everything that happens to you is never meant to stop with you. It's always meant to go through you into the life of another. Otherwise, this book could have stopped on page three. But God wouldn't have it. He chose to use really imperfect people since the very beginning to use his story to impact them, to go through them into the life of another. And this little baby boy changes things for me even when I look at you. You guys are the first group of college students I've spoken to since, nope, second, since, (laughs) second since, since I had him. But I was thinking about that thought and I thought, it's interesting, there's gonna be a moment where I'm no longer like holding him and I'm looking at him and he won't hear from me the same. But you know who he's gonna hear from? (laughs) You guys. So don't screw it up. Um, (laughs) No, really though, really though. Uh, So as I speak to you, just to write down nuggets, because you're gonna bring it to him by how you live, the movies you make, the different majors you live in, and the environments in which you will have an impact. But let me say this, the good things, the bad things, and the everything in between happens to you, not just for you, I promise you that. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter four. We're gonna see how Jesus does missions this morning. And we're gonna see one of the first missionaries he sends out after he chooses his 12. John chapter four. You know, as a speaker, I used to always save my spot in uh, the Bible. You know those speakers that do that and they're like, turn with me to John four, I'm there. (laughs) (laughs) And then they're like, beat your neighbor. (laughs) <laughs> Beat your neighbor. And the people with cell phones are like, sucka. <clears throat> We're going to hear from God today. I hope you're hungry to hear from him because that world is very loud. And I want to hear from him this morning. By the way, one of the biggest questions I ever get from college students is, how do you hear from God? You know what my response is now? Um, you, you read it. It's his word. Okay. John chapter four, we're gonna read for a bit, starting in verse three. When when the Lord learned of this, he left Judea, Judea here, and went back once more to Galilee on top. In the middle is Samaria. Judea here, Galilee up top, Samaria in the middle. He left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his sons Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Uh, Jewish time starts at 6 a.m., so the sixth hour means noon, the blazing hot time of the day. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and this well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so I I won't have to be thirsty and have to keep coming down here to draw water. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. You see, I I have no husband, (laughs) she replied. Jesus said to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. Turns out, You've actually had five. And uh, the, the man you live with now is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. I love her response. Sir, I can see that you're a prophet. 
Jump down to verse 25. They talk about worship. And the woman says, you know, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, who speak to you, am he. Pray with me. And when I say pray with me, you guys all, yeah. When I say pray with me, I mean pray with me, not just listen to me pray. Will you do that? And I always say this, but I, I intentionally, we've done this, I've heard you guys do this a lot, but you put your hands out um, very simply if you want more. I don't know where you've been running. I don't know if these words resonate with you. Ready for it? Anxious. Overwhelmed. Stressed. Tired. Ashamed. Uninspired. Enthusiastic. Free. But if you're someone that just wants more of him, I'm gonna invite you to pray with me. With your hands postured as you would like your heart this morning. Open. Heavenly Father, thank you for right now hearing our prayers. Lord, right now, before we um, listen to a message, Lord, I want to hear from you directly. So, Lord, right now, some of us have our hands out, some don't, but Lord, would we listen to what you might have for us? I fear, I, I know some people fear silence because we expect you to be silent. <laughs> God, in the next 30 seconds of quiet, would we cry out to you and then be silent to listen for your whisper? Thank you, Lord, for your words. May they impact our lives. And then would we not shut up about it? <laughs> you have good things. Thank you. Amen. <sighs> Jesus, on the way to where he was going, on the way, that's significant. On the way to where he was going, he was living his purpose. He wasn't waiting till he arrived. Have you ever been a part of that, like, as soon as club? The one that says, you know, as soon as I graduate, or as soon as that test is over, or as soon as we get to the weekend, or as soon as you fill in the blank, as soon as I get the job offer, I'll begin living my purpose. I'll say this, don't wait for a job opportunity to start living your purpose today. Because you live your life the way you live your days. You know what that means? That means your entire life, guess what it is? It's a makeup of a bunch of little days. You know what that means? Today matters. Change today, change your life. Because you're creating habits today for the rest of your life. If you want to do missions, if you want to proclaim don't wait for a stage. <laughs> Don't wait for your classroom. On the way to where he was headed, it says in verse four, Jesus had to go to Samaria. And when Jesus has to do something, we must take note. Because <laughs> Jesus doesn't have to do anything. In fact, people of that time, there's Judea, there's Galilee. Jewish people of that time would go around Samaria. I read it, because Jews, Jews and Samaritans, they despised each other. To say they didn't like each other would be an understatement. Jews looked at Samaritans as half-breeds. There was conflict. And rather than going around, it says this, Jesus had to go through Samaria. Why did he have to go through Samaria? because he lived his purpose on the way. You might be going 
somewhere to do missions. You might have a time set out, and I'll say, don't wait till you arrive. Follow Jesus. He did it along the way. You know what that means? Your walk from here to wherever you're going matters. <laughs> you might, by the way, did you know that your eyes are the eyes in which Jesus sees people that need to be seen? Your hands are the hands Jesus used to hug people that need to be hugged. Your feet are the feet Jesus uses to walk to the places that he needs to be. Do you have any idea how significant your life is in Christ? I don't want you to miss out. See, I, uh, <laughs> for one of my, one job uh, I have is I work for a publishing company in the area of family ministry. And I remember I was on a plane and I was going to a conference called D6, stands for Deuteronomy 6, basically that says this, parents are the primary disciplers of their kids. I'm gonna go talk to children's and family pastors, that's what I'm gonna go do, have a conversation with them about this question, listen for it. Have you missed out on ministering to families in the midst of doing family ministry? I thought it was pretty clever. <laughs> in fact, I was on the plane, pulled out my, I don't know why I pulled it out like that, but I did. <laughs> the flight attendant's like, are you okay? I'm like, water. And, uh, <laughs> and I pull out my laptop and I do the earbud thing. You know what that communicates like, I'm busy. Have you done it? Coffee shop, you know, I'm busy, don't talk to me. And the guy next to me is like, what are you working on? And I did this, ew, 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 the like, I'm too busy and important at this moment, so I did this. I'm sorry, what was that? Like, close enough to where he knows I'm ready to put it back in. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, what was that? He's like, what are you working on? I'm like, oh, this uh, thing, this uh, conference thing. And he's like, oh, and I'm like, oh, there it is, back in my ear. And, um, and the question I was typing was my brilliant question. You're, let, me, let me give it to you again, it's so good. Tweet it, seriously, so good. Are you missing out on ministering to families in the midst of doing family ministry. And the guy's like, you know, my, my uh, I love my daughter. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what? <laughs> and he's like, are you doing that for a church? I'm like, actually, you know, <laughs> yeah, actually I'm doing, you know, I'm gonna go help a lot of pastors or whatever. Uh, and he's like, you know, oh, I volunteered at church. And I'm thinking, like, good for, good for you, you know? And, um, <laughs> and he goes, my daughter got me into it. She's so great. I'm like, I bet she is. <laughs> and he continues, and he continues. And you know what he does? He talks about his daughter like this. My daughter's the best. My daughter's the best at this. I'm so proud of my daughter. She's third in her class in high school. She's this. She's the best athlete. He kept using this comparison language. And there's a moment, it's hitting me. I've, I've done work with high school students and college students enough to know that that girl, if she was sitting in this audience, will think that her approval from people is gonna be found in what she's good at. Not who she, I, I know this. I know her daughter's gonna be lost at a place like Biola, walking around waiting to try to become the best because that's what she thinks she has to offer the world because that's what her dad has seen in her. And I know this. And then I looked at my computer and saw the question, in the midst of doing family ministry, are you missing out on ministering to families? And a dad is talking about his daughter. Come on. <laughs> Within five minutes, the guy is in tears saying, I can't wait to go home because I asked him a few simple questions and he arrived at some profound answers because the Holy Spirit was at work. I was preparing this message, getting to the next part where Jesus asks a very simple question. Will you give me a drink? Is his question. He starts with a really simple question. I'm typing, again, again, round two, typing this message at a coffee, <laughs> at a coffee shop. And a girl walks up and she goes, do you know how to use a Macintosh? I'm like, who calls it that? <laughs> <laughs> and I did the ear thing again. And I realized the question I was writing at that moment was divine moments happen in the midst of simple questions. And I could have missed it. Have you missed it lately? Or are you worried about where you're headed? Or the impact you'll have as soon as you get somewhere else? God might have you exactly where you're at, going through exactly what he has for you for a purpose divine appointments. By the way, the girl, she goes, I need help with my um, computer because I'm writing a paper compare contrasting Christianity and Islam because I'm trying to find the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
true story. True story. I'll get them. Don't worry. It's okay. Oh, I need those. Oh. An hour later. Oh, true story. But to be honest, I could have missed it. Put the earbuds on, headed to where I thought I was headed, not where Jesus had for me. What does he have for you? See, the thing about simple questions, the thing about simple questions is that they show people that you care. Simple questions show people that you care. As I was looking at this logo, I was picturing, I just want people to become question askers. And then when the sound bite happens, to be listeners on this side of it. To show people that you care. And by the way, quick definition of listening. Listening is not waiting for your turn to talk. Let me, uh, before you cheer, I'm gonna call you out a little bit more. Zing, okay. <laughs> Have you ever done it? <clears throat> you, make a, you make a statement at lunch, and then you go like this. They start talking, and you're like, hurry. And then you go like this. Oh, I got something. Hurry. And then you go, I got something else. And then you're like, what was the first thing? They're still talking, mind you. And then they stop. And it's, no, no, no. Listening is not waiting for your turn to talk. Who needs to be heard? This woman needed to be seen. This woman needed to be heard. And on the way to where he was going, Jesus had a divine appointment and it started with a simple question. By the way, Biola students, you will make more friends in one day by being interested in them than in a month by trying to get them interested in you. I, uh, (laughs) <laughs> thought of this thing I used to do in cabins at Hume Lake. I, I get all, I'd walk in, all the girls, <clears throat> and all these girls would get in a circle, and I'm like, come here, everybody come here, and they're like, okay, and they all sit in this little circle, and I'm like, who wants to play a game? They're like, fun game, fun game. I'm like, yes, come on. <laughs> I'm like, here's the game, it's called, if you really knew me, you would know. They're like, that doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, it doesn't? Okay. And the thing about this game is we would go around and share the story. If you really knew me, you would know, and we'd finish the sentence. We'd start really shallow and then get really deep. And we'd take a few rounds. The significance of that game, I will say this, absolutely it matters to share with other people so they can really know you. Absolutely, that matters. And for those of you in the crowd that are fixers, you know who you are. People need to know that you need fixing from Jesus as well. But also, everyone else in the crowd. The significance of that game was, uh, number one, absolutely sharing, absolutely. Number two, that people usually missed was listening. I one time sat in a circle and I shared this. Um, If you really knew me, you would know that I hate when people use the word retarded because I have a handicapped cousin and uh, she can't control it, but people can control their words. I hate when they use that word. And I'll never forget the very next day at this Christian camp, 1,000 people, and there's a, <laughs> I'll never forget, there's a gorilla chasing a banana suit. I'm like, of course there is. And they're like, I'm like, I'm like laughing. <laughs> and then the banana trips, and we're like, go figure. <laughs> and then someone yells out, you're such a retard. And I just like, oh. And some girl in the cabin who was listening walked up beside me put her arm around me and said, you don't have to be alone with that thought anymore. There's power in proclaiming, and when people need to be heard, there is power in listening. Would we be people that not just speak at, but share life with and are willing to listen? We must listen to what Jesus proclaims to us, by the way before he uses us to proclaim it to others. So let's look at what Jesus has to say to us today. Jesus says this, can I have some water? And this is surprising to this woman. Remember, for many reasons, Jew, Samaritan, woman, man, you've already heard her testimony, um, rabbi, outcast. So many reasons why this is surprising. She says this, why would you talk to me? (laughs) Jesus says, If you knew the gift of God and who it was that was asking you, you would actually ask me and I would give you living water. And she responds, she doesn't get it. She goes, where's your cup? (laughs) (laughs) 
I find that really interesting. You know, we look and we, we read this, we're like, living water, oh, he's so beautiful. And, you know, she's like, sorry, um, we're at a well, and you don't even have a bucket. <laughs> Where are we going to get this living water from? And then in verses 13 and 14, Jesus outlines the difference between drinking from a well that satisfies for a moment and drinking from a spring himself that satisfies forever. And the woman responds. She says, sure, I'll take a little bit of what you're offering. (laughs) And by the way, this is usually where kind of like, for me at least, Sometimes I let church stop right there. Jesus has something good and it's like, sure. Yeah, add that on, sprinkle a little bit, and then I'll walk out and try a little bit harder and try to remember that. Am I the only one in that one? (laughs) Divine encounters with Jesus change us. That's why he has to go there. Divine encounters with Jesus change us. And I learned this actually kind of a silly way. <laughs> I, uh, when I was in college, I was kind of like you guys. I saw a guy walking around without shoes. There you are. And I'm like, that's so me. I would have just been like, no, who needs shoes? Not me, you know? And I'd like, I was kind of that like, do anything crazy. And I remember I had this uh, one friend and I was like, I want to know, like I want to encounter Jesus more often. I, I, I sat in a chapel, I got a little sprinkle and I'm like, I want to live in. She's like, oh no, what do you have in mind? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, why are you doing that with your hands? I'm like, deal with it. So here's what we're going to do. I had heard this idea from a friend of mine. I'm like, I want to try it. She's like, what is it? I'm like, okay, so today's Tuesday as if a watch says the day. And uh, she's like, Okay, Tuesday, and I'm like, let's pretend on Tuesdays for the rest of the semester. Why not? You know, it's always good, by the way, when you do something crazy to have like an end in mind. (laughs) I'm like, just on Tuesdays, rest of the semester, let's pretend we're walking with Jesus literally. She's like, oh no. I'm like, just try it. She's like, all right. First Tuesday. I was asleep and I woke up. That's what happens in the morning, I know. And fix my hair. Okay. And I remember I woke up and I remembered <laughs> immediately. It was like this. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I was like, as good as, as good as you. <laughs> okay. And I was like, you go over there. I'm going to get ready. So I remember I was like, okay. And I, uh, <laughs> true story. And I remember I got, we got ready, and then I got outside, and I opened the door for him, let him through, close the door, and then I went to, like, get his door for him. I was like, I was like, you are welcome, Jesus. And I closed the door, and then I go around to my side, and I get in. This is what I did. I started driving, and I pulled, oh, parked, and I got my phone out, and I was like, this one's for you, worship song. I started like going and I'm awkwardly singing to the person and I'm just going, I'm like, this is already good. And then I got to the university and I remember I started walking down a path and I thought like, well, if he's like here, I like, scoot it over. And so we're like walking and I remember one of the first doors I opened for him on campus, I opened the door and like, it was so funny. <laughs> I know the story, you don't, it's okay. And um, <laughs> these young girls thought the door was for them. <laughs> And so they're like, they're like over here, and they're like awkwardly walking, like, and they started kind of hurrying, cause like it was like way too early for them, and I was like, sucka, and uh, <laughs> and I walk up, and my friend Jessica is sitting there laughing, and I'm like, and she had her coffee, <sighs> she had my iced caramel macchiato, and there was a third coffee. And I was like, you did not pay for that. And she goes, he can hear you. (laughs) There are so, there's so, I'll spare you. There are so many stories. Oh, one more. Okay, one more. One more. Okay. (laughs) Just one more, because that guy, this one's for you and him. Okay, and uh, (laughs) Okay, we'll do this one. I was <laughs> driving on a Tuesday, and I left him at home. I forgot. 
And I remember I'm driving and it hit me halfway on the drive and I was like, but he's like, he's, Je you know, poof, he's Jesus, he's there. <laughs> and I was like, no. I was late already and I turned around. <laughs> I walked up to the door, I opened the door, he walks out, I had my head down ashamed, kid you not, and it dawned on me, he forgives me, that's so like him. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I'm thinking of other stories, I'm not gonna do anymore, but, so, no, you, but I hear you because I'm listening. <laughs> Let me just tell you this about Tuesdays with Jesus. People met Jesus for the first time on Tuesdays. And I gotta be honest with you, I listened to different music on Tuesdays. Gentlemen and ladies, are there songs on your iPhone that need to be deleted? I know you paid for that, <laughs> but Jesus died for it, too. And by the way, like Jesus, he doesn't bring up our sin in a shame-driven kind of way. Thank God. He invites us into something better. So if you hear something that I say that gets you, please don't allow it to be shame that is not from the Lord or guilt. It is an invitation into something way, way, way better. I don't want you to miss it. Jesus had to go through Samaria because he had to meet her. Go, get your husband. <laughs> well, she responds, what had happened, see what had happened was, <laughs> yeah, I don't have one. He goes, yeah, you're right. It's not just one. <laughs> it's not just one man, it's men. And they've been running your lives. And I gotta be honest with you, as I bring up this woman, I was bringing her up last night in my thoughts, I was running through my notes. And I got really emotional because I thought this. I, like her, deeply thirst for acceptance significance and love. I deeply thirst for acceptance from you. I hate to admit it. I have been overwhelmed. Thank the Lord yesterday I had a moment where he not just forgave me for that, but he freed me. By the way, sometimes those are very different. Some of you may know that you're forgiven. Let me ask you this, are you actually walking in freedom? You may know you're forgiven, but are you walking in freedom? Why her? Why, why do I bring her up? Why does Jesus had to go for her? Here's why. Because this living water that Jesus has to offer is a, he says it, a gift. A gift, by the way, is not based on what you've earned. It's not based on your status. It's not based on how much you've prayed or how much you haven't. It's not based on how much you've done for the Lord. It's not based on your past. It's based on his. It's a gift. Revelation chapter 21, verse six. Don't turn there, I'll read it. One of the theme verses. He said to me, John says, God says, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Notice what he says here. To him who is thirsty, I will give drink. I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. It doesn't say to him who is good, to him who is perfect, to him who has prayed enough today. By the way, I've never heard someone say, you know, I do pray enough. Just never heard that. It says this, to him who is thirsty, and I realized something last night, and it's this, it's not bad that you thirst for significance, love, and acceptance. That's not a bad thirst. 
what happens is we thirst for it from the wrong places or the wrong people. And Jesus says, I am the living water in Christ, by the way. You are significant. Gosh, I wish I could tell you this individual. I wish I could sit across from you from coffee, so I'm just going to assume that you actually will hear this by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Christ, you are loved. You are significant, not based on what you've done. You are accepted. Jesus' living water is for you this morning. And you must see this is an invitation, not condemnation. Jesus' tone, he says, you know, let's, he invites us to look at the broken wells we've gone to to try to be eternally satisfied in. And Jesus says, go, bring back your secrets. You see, what I've realized is there's two significant barriers that have come up as I've been studying this text with you guys in mind. There's two different barriers I want to address. Two different things that could get in the way of us not just knowing we're free, but walking in it. Two different barriers. First one, are you drinking from the wrong source for life? If so, confess. Let me ask it a different way. Where have you been looking to quench your spiritual thirst? Jesus invites us to go bring back that relationship or a longing you have for one. Go. By the way, girls, quick note for you guys. Guys cannot fix what's gone wrong with your soul. Guys, I'm not leaving you out, don't worry about that. Are you more concerned with finding the right person or becoming a person worth finding. Wow. I love this guy. Can you just? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll be friends. We'll be friends after. <clears throat> Are you? <laughs> more concerned with finding the right job or being a person worth that job finding. I think Andy Stanley put it this way. He said, are you the person, the person you're looking for is looking for. <laughs> Love that. Are you the person? Don't worry about finding. <laughs> worry about becoming what's already true of you. By the way, you may have a long list. A lot of you guys, you know, I have an intern who's in the audience who I know and I love her but I know she's overwhelmed. I love her. And I think about her and I think about you all. You're doing a lot and a lot of good. You're overwhelmed. By the way, don't search for all that good to be the satisfaction you thirst for. Go. Bring me your relationships. Go, bring me Here's another one, your addictions. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, I'm just referring to your phone. <laughs> Again, no shame, invitation. By the way, I have this other thought. <laughs> Failure in any of these areas is an event, not a person, okay? As I address these different things, it's not, it's not a person, you're not a failure, it's an event or it's what's been going on, I want you to experience freedom. Go bring me your obsession with your appearance. Go bring me your busyness. Go bring me your control. I wanna be in control. Do you wanna be part of his mission, proclaiming his name? Jesus says, go back and bring me your secrets. Confess. And I'll say this, confession is liberating and not crushing. It's a way to break the chains that these false saviors have on you. 
Number one, have you been drinking from the wrong source of life? Number two, anxious and stressed <laughs> and overwhelmed. The people in this audience, maybe you're in this audience and you just, maybe it's a circumstance or just an overarching, you have a bunch of why questions. Why are you going through such hard times? Why are you so tired? Why are you so busy? All these why questions. By the way, um, God doesn't care what you come to him with, even if they're all these why questions. He just cares that you come to him. Will you bring him your why questions? You may be wondering, why am I going through the hardship that I'm going through? That's a good one. By the way, I don't have an answer for you. But here's what I do know. I used to have a small group of girls when I worked at this church, and uh, I remember we sat around, and I asked this question. <clears throat> when was a time you encountered Jesus and you were confident it was him? Think about it. When was a time you encountered Jesus and you were confident it was him. They started giving answers. First one, during the hardest season of my life, I met Jesus in this way, shares the story. Person two, you know I lost this significant person in my life and Jesus was really near to me. Person three, Story, story, story. Person five <laughs> was like, oh, I just added, had an aha. I'm like, share with us. <laughs> and she goes like this, I get it. I get why God allows us to go through hard times. He allows us to see him, and it's worth it. And for some of you, though, in this room, it doesn't feel worth it. Some of you have experienced serious loss. I don't want to just get through this message, give a bunch of points, and then step off. I want to address kind of a hard topic, and I'm surprised. I had a woman pray over me a couple weeks ago for this message, and she goes, you might be surprised what story you tell. And I was like, okay. And this one came to mind. Some of you in this room have big why questions. Why did this person get it, and I didn't? <laughs> Why is that person who's not following Jesus successful and I'm not? What's my significance? Why? Why am I not giving, given the opportunities? Why? Why did I lose this person? Why? And a friend of mine once told me a story. It's this guy friend of mine. He's this bigger guy and he has three kids and one of his daughters, when she was really young, she's like, I wanna go to the park. And he's like, nah, you're a kid. I'm a dad, let's do it. So they, you know, they go to the park and he's kind of a bigger guy and he's sharing the story and he shared the story of like the first time she wanted to get on like that, what are they, jungle gyms? Is that what they call? Yeah, jungle gyms, she gets up and he says he was like under the jungle gym as she was going up the stairs, he would have his hands on both sides of the stairs and she would like grab his hand until it would get to a pole and then he'd like grab her hand from this side and then back to this hand and he's walking her through it walking her through, and then she gets to that one, what's that bridge thing called that's like, you know that one? What is that one? What is that one? Just the bridge, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, what is it, do you know, no? Okay, uh, suspension bridge, thank you. And so, you know, and she's doing that thing, and he's doing that thing, and he's under, and then she's, she goes down the first slide, and, and he's like, yeah, victory in slow motion, they high five, you know, and then he goes, and he walks her, and she goes down the slide, and then she looks up at the big slide, it's like, and then like beaming, groove, and he's like, <gasps> he's like, are you sure you're ready? And she's like, born ready, you know? <laughs> and he's like, okay, and he, you know, he's doing it, and <sighs> suspension, <laughs> suspension bridge. And then she has to go up that random one to the random castle, you know, the castle at the top. She throws down her hair and he climbs, I'm kidding. And um, she gets to the top and she like looks down and he's at the bottom like, I'm here for you. And she's like, yeah, for sure. <sighs> and then, true story, a seven-year-old boy runs. shoves her out of the way in that little castle, shoves her out of the way, true story, punches her for no reason, slides down the slide and runs. 
Dad is at the bottom saying, two options, kill boy, be with my girl. Of course, he chooses his girl. And he runs up and he holds her. And she's screaming, why, dad? Why? And he couldn't explain to her little brain that that little boy grew up in a little home where you hit when you're angry. He, her brain wouldn't understand that. All he kept saying to her is, I'm here. I'm here. She's screaming, why? And he can't explain why. He can only tell her he's there. And some of you have bruises. Some of you are screaming, why? And I can't solve that question. God doesn't promise us an easy life after this chapel or in your past, but he does promise he'll be there with you through and on the way to wherever you're headed. Some of you need to cuddle up into his arms. Is that enough for you? Of course, the story goes, the little girl's like, I hate boys. And he's like, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and he's like, let's, you know, you can do this. We'll, we'll do this. And she's like, I hate slides. He's like, no. And he kept, they kept going back like every week. And she's like, and he's like, ready for the slide? She's like, never. A month later, the bruise is finally like wearing off. <laughs> and of course, the dad's like, I'm going with you. And she's like, okay. You know, so big guy, he's like, I'm going with you. So he takes her, puts her, like holds her. I'm not sure how he held her. Put her on the back, I don't know. And he goes up the stairs. He goes across the suspension bridge. He goes up the little castle. He holds his girl. He sits and they go inch by inch because it didn't work that well down that stupid little slide. And they did it like 30 times in a row. And he's like, dad's got you. I'm with you in it. The world may not be great, but that's why I put you in it. You may be wondering, what's God doing about so-and-so? That's why he put it on your heart. You're what he's doing about it. And of course, there's a moment where she's like, I can do it by myself, and she does, and she goes down, and they walk off, but I don't bring up the story to say, so there's gonna be an easy slide. But we do know how the story ends. <laughs> that story as well. It is done. I am the beginning. I, my presence, I am the end. And I am the everything in between. I may not promise you an easy life, but I promise you I'll be with you along the way. If you currently have things to confess, would you bring them before you go on mission for him? Would you bring those things to him? By the way, he won't fix your issue necessarily. <laughs> I tell you this, if you're struggling, here's one, a heavy one, depression. If that's your struggle, you struggle with this, you experience him, it doesn't mean you're suddenly just gonna never experience it again. But I'll say this, you'll go through it with him, and then you might come out on the other side with that experience in hand, because anything that happens to you is never meant to stop with you. That might be Satan's greatest weapon against you or God's greatest tool for his kingdom. You will come through it with it still in hand and one day you will be completely free but in the meantime you will walk with him in freedom. You're not alone. Don't believe that lie. God wants to use you on the way. Let's see what happened to the woman, verse 28. Then, <laughs> leaving her water jar, love it, there she goes. The woman went back into town and said to the people, come, <laughs> see a man 
not see a moral code, not see a list of to-dos, not see anything, but see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Transformation has begun. Do you want to know how I know this? Before, she was ashamed, going to wells at at noon because she wanted to be alone. Now she is running into those same places proclaiming. Transformation has begun. She is free. The thing she is running from became the thing she leads the conversation with. When Jesus died and resurrected on the third day, he showed his scars to tell his story. She begins her testimony with the very thing she was hiding before. Transformation has begun. The response to an authentic encounter with grace is the effortless overflow of grace into the life of others. That's mission. Let's see what else what happens. Verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Ready for it? He told me everything I ever did. He knows everything you've ever done and accepts you. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed for two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They, the crowd, said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you have said. Now we have heard, listened ourselves, and we know that this man, Jesus Christ, is the Savior of the world. All praise and honor be to Jesus, but thank God. God, he invites us into a story that's not about us, but absolutely involves us, and your part is significant. Image is nothing. Thirst is everything. Let your thirst lead you to encounter Jesus, the living water. He alone freely gives absolute refreshment and complete satisfaction and invites you into new life and freedom. You want to know why Jesus had to go through Samaria? (laughs) Because Jesus is in the habit of using very imperfect people to proclaim his name. Welcome to the club. Let's pray. God, thank you for using this woman who is nameless. Some of us have worried about our names being known. God, I want to proclaim your name. The name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Lord, you are the living water our soul thirsts for. I proclaim this over these students. Would they have the courage to confess? Would they have courage to bring their whys to you? With every eye closed, I just want to give you a little bit of time because even in the midst of missions conference, it's hard to get alone. I find it interesting that this woman, Jesus corners this woman when she's alone to meet with her. And divine encounters change everything. I don't know if something specifically hit you, but we simply want to pray for you. (laughs) Yes, we have a prayer team up front, but before we do, would you do business with God? And then I simply invite you to allow us to come alongside you, to remind you we're not, you're not alone. You have a group of people up at the front who don't want to fix you. <laughs> they want to bring you to Jesus. And that is what your soul thirsts for. Missions conference is beautiful. God wants to send you out whether locally or globally, and along the way to do his work. But some of you have business. You know who you are. Do not miss this opportunity to have a divine encounter with the living God.
because of your pride. Would you take this time, the next two minutes of silent, and spend time with him? And I invite you to have courage. It's okay to be needy. Would you come forward during the next couple songs of worship? If you just want to have divine encounters and meet with Jesus. But don't wait till you get up front. Start in your seat, but be willing to come. Go, get your secrets. And would you bring them forward as an act of confession and obedience to his call? Take time alone, two minutes. The band, in about two minutes, will go into some worship songs. And if you feel so compelled, would you come forward? Like the woman, would you lead the conversation with maybe the things you've been hiding? <laughs> Don't miss what he's up to along the way. The time is yours. Biola University prepares Christians to think biblically about everything, from science to business to education and the arts. Learn more at biola.edu.